Awesome, thanks so much. Okay, so I'm gonna be talking about Waldo, a private time series database from function secret sharing. This is joint work with Mayong, Raluca, and Jan at UC Berkeley. So there's a growing trend of relying on cloud databases to store and query time series data. So examples of this include smart homes, industrial IoT, and remote patient monitoring. One challenge with these applications is that the data is often sensitive, and so there's a danger of server compromise. So to make this a bit more concrete, let's consider the example of remote patient monitoring. So we have a patient and a database, and this database is going to store features like a timestamp, um, systolic and diastolic blood pressure measurements, and a heart rate. So over time, the patient is going to send the database records, uh, and the records are gonna populate the database. Um, and then at some later point in time, um, we have some doctor that wants to make some query about the patient's data. So for example, let's say the doctor wants to compute the average heart rate where the time is between some interval, the systolic blood pressure is greater than 110, and diastolic is greater than 80. Um, so here we wanna compute some aggregate based on some multi-predicate filter. Now we're also worried about this, an attacker compromising the database. So we'd like to protect the data contents as well as the query filter values. And by query filter values, I mean uh, the values in these predicates, so what the time interval is between, um, the 110 in systolic greater than 110, and the 80 in diastolic greater than 80. Um, so there's been a lot of prior work on encrypted databases, and these allow us to run queries over encrypted data. Um, but one challenge with all these solutions is that they all have leakage. So the server learns some information that can be exploited to recover the data and or the query. So how the server accesses the data can reveal information about the underlying data contents or the query. So this could be, for example, how many records match a particular predicate. So our goal is to protect these search access patterns. So how the server accesses data should not reveal information about the data or the query filter values. So one challenge in finding a solution is that tools for hiding search access patterns are expensive. So examples of these tools include ORAM or MPC. Um, we talk in the paper a bit about why these are expensive in the encrypted time series database setting. Uh, and we'd like to achieve these three requirements. So functionality, security, and efficiency. So for functionality, we want to be able to support multi-predicate aggregation queries while protecting the data contents, query filter values, and search access patterns. And we'd also like good efficiency, um, so good latency and communication. So we present Waldo, which achieves all three of these. So we consider the following threat model. So we have three non-colluding servers. So we assume these three servers are deployed in different trust domains, such that if an attacker compromises one of them, it's not straightforward to compromise the other. And we have clients interacting with these servers. So some clients um, in the remote patient monitoring setting might be patients that are uploading data. Others might be doctors that are querying the data. So we can tolerate at most one malicious compromise, so we operate in the three-party honest majority setting. And in this setting, Waldo protects the data contents, query filter values, and search access patterns. And the attacker is allowed to learn the database schema as well as the query structure. So to make this a bit more concrete, let's go back to the original example. Um, so in this setting, the attacker doesn't learn the data contents, it just learns an opaque identifier associated with each of these features. So this F1, F2, F3, F4. And when the doctor makes a query, the attacker can see that the doctor is querying the average of feature F4, where F1 is between some interval, and F2 is greater than some value, or F3 is greater than some other value. Also, the attacker can't see these search access patterns, so Waldo protects these. Um, so for example, it can't see which records match a particular predicate or even how many records match a particular predicate. So for the rest of this talk, I'm just gonna use the simple notation. So we split some value X in the ring two VL into shares X1 through Xn, such that summing them together gives us the original value X. And we identify function secret sharing as being particularly well suited to our setting. Um, so a two-party function secret sharing scheme for the function F splits F into two succinct shares, or keys, such that given a key, parties can compute shares of, of the function F evaluated at X without learning the original function F. So to make this a, a bit more concrete, we can consider the syntax. So we have two functions, gen and eval. So gen, given some function F, is going to generate keys K1 and K2, such that each key is going to hide the function F. So just given one of these keys, the party can't learn the original function F. 
We also have some eval function where given one of these keys in a point x, we can output the function f evaluated at x. So if we sum up um, the evaluation of key k1 at point x and the evaluation of key k2 at x, we'll get the function f evaluated at x. So efficient constructions exist for point, function, for point functions and comparison functions, where point functions evaluate to some value at a particular point and zero everywhere else, and comparison functions evaluate to a particular value in a specific range. Um, so from, from function secret sharing, it's pretty straightforward to build aggregate queries for public data. Um, so I'm going to start off uh, building aggregate queries for public data in the two-party setting where we consider semi-honest servers, and I'll slowly build up um, to, private quer to queries on private data in the three-party setting. Uh, won't quite get to malicious security, but you can see our paper for details on that. Um, so let's say the doctor wants to compute the, the sum of all the medical costs for a patient with ID 112. Um, so we're going to start off. The doctor's going to compute some FSS keys for the function that evaluates to 1 at point 112 and 0 everywhere else. So the doctor's going to send key K1 to server 1 and key K2 to server 2. And then for each row in the database, um, the server's going to evaluate its key at the ID value for that row. So in this row, we're going to evaluate key K1 at point 112. This is going to evaluate to be shares of 1. We multiply it by that cost in the row, so this will be shares of 1,000. We do this for the next row. This time, our evaluation is going to be shares of 0. We multiply it together, we get shares of 0. And then for the next row, shares of 1 multiplied by 700. Um, so then we sum all these together. We send back shares of 1,700. And then the doctor can output the result of the query, which is 1,700. So all the medical costs for patient with ID 112. So it's pretty straightforward to compute queries um, for public data. But the real challenge is how do we extend these techniques to private data? So in this setting, function secret sharing, um, this eval routine takes as input um, the value uh, that we're evaluating the function on. So what happens if we want to have this value actually be private? So the server is computing um, some predicate where it doesn't actually know the data that's being stored at the server. So how can we do this? So our idea is to leverage the structure of the search index itself. Um, so for each feature, we're going to construct a table. Um, so we're going to have uh, the records, we're going to have a column for each record, um, and for each row, we're going to have a possible feature value. Um, so here, entry i comma j is going to equal 1 if record i has heart rate j and 0 otherwise. So each column is essentially a one-hot encoding of that feature. Um, so here we can see record 3 has heart rate 79. And now appends are pretty cheap, so we're just going to add a column into the table. And we're really targeting applications that are just querying recent data, so that we only care about the most recent columns that were added to this table. One limitation of this table structure is that it constrains the domain of features that we're filtering on. Um, so because now we need a row for every possible feature value. However, in the applications we examined, we found that features and predicates were already from a fairly small domain, so around 256, or could easily be mapped to one. So examples of this include age, height, heart rate, blood glucose level, or percentage. It's also true that you can represent large domains via conjunctions. So you can have a conjunction on the high order bits of the feature and the low order bits. Also, this restriction only applies to features that you're filtering on, not features that you're aggregating. Um, so how can we apply the search index structure in order to search over data that's private? Um, so now each server is going to store a copy of this table. Um, we have the section of the table in gray. Let's assume we have some way to make this, uh, to actually protect the contents of this table. I'll show you how we do that in just a second. Um, but the server can see the contents of the table that's outside the box. Um, and this data is just public. It's not revealing anything about the contents of the table. Um, so now let's say the doctor wants to compute the number of records where the heart rate is equal to 80. Um, so as before, we're going to generate FSS keys, this time for the function that evaluates to 1 at point 80. We send the FSS keys to the servers. Then for each row, we're going to evaluate the FSS keys on the value corresponding to that row. We multiply by the, the evaluation by each of the values um, in that row and sum them all together. We do this for each of the rows. This is going to allow us to essentially select the one row that we care about, so row 80, and sum up and get shares of the summation of all the values in that row, so the number of records that have heart rate equal to 80. So we send back shares of two. The doctor can combine these and send back the result. Um, so now I promised that I'd talk a little bit about how we actually protect the contents of this table um, in the gray box. So our key insight here is to use replicated secret sharing with function secret sharing. 
So in function secret sharing, we need identical copies of the data in order to execute, uh, in order to execute the query. So replicated secret sharing allows us to have identical copies of the data while also protecting the contents. So we can break the contents of the table into the additive shares one, two, and three. Then we give sh server one shares one and two, server two shares two and three, and server three shares three and one. And now the idea is that we're going to essentially run the same protocol as before on each of the shares of the table. Um, so now instead of generating just one key pair, the doctor is going to generate three key pairs. Uh, it's going to send the keys to the servers that correspond to the shares that they have. And now we're going to execute the protocol first on share one of the table, then on share two of the table, and then on share three of the table. The servers will send back the results. We sum all the results together. So this is going to be the result of the query executed on each of the shares of the table, and then we can sum all those together. And that's going to give us the result. Um, so Bun et al. use a similar technique, uh, combining replicated secret sharing with function secret sharing, but their work is really focused on the distributed ORM setting, um, whereas we're focused on uh, performing these aggregate queries um, based on filtering in the time series setting. So there's some other contributions in the paper that I don't, that I don't have time to talk about today, including how we provide filtering uh, with multiple predicates. Uh, here it's useful that we're using replicated secret sharing. We also provide tools for cheap malicious security and a construction for complex aggregates over time ranges. And this allows us to support nonlinear aggregation functions like min, max, and top k, but we can only filter on time to do this. So we also evaluate our solution. Our code is open source and available uh, at this link here. We run our experiments with three 32-core servers configured with a three gigabyte per second connection and a 20 millisecond round trip time. Uh, and we run with eight predicate queries uh, in the examples that I'm going to show. And we compare it to two baselines, so an oblivious multidimensional tree, so building an R tree inside of path ORAM, and also a generic MPC solution, so running MP speeds with a three-party honest majority setting. Um, so here we're looking at latency from around 1,000 records to around a million. Um, but here you can see the Waldo point in range. Uh, you just see the, blue, the dark blue line. This is because the point in range query performance is almost identical. Um, and we can see that for around 1,000 records, there's about an 8x difference between Waldo and the MP speeds baseline, and a 37x difference between Waldo and our ORAM baseline. Uh, the overhead of Waldo and MP speeds baseline is going to grow linearly with the number of records, as we'd expect, because the table size grows linearly with the number of records, whereas our ORAM baseline is going to grow polylogarithmically. So this gap between the two is going to close as we increase the number of records. Um, however, throughput, there's a much larger gap between Waldo and ORAM. And this is due to the overhead of updates um, or appends in ORAM, because now you need an ORAM operation um, to add a record, whereas in Waldo, you just need to append one column to this table. Um, so here we can see for around 1,000 records, there's around a 303x difference between Waldo and ORAM, and a 22x difference um, in throughput for around a million records. So a much larger gap. So in conclusion, Waldo is a time series database that provides functionality, security, and efficiency. So it supports multi-predicate queries while hiding the data contents, query filter values, and search access patterns. And it does this while providing low latency, high throughput, and low bandwidth. Uh, thanks, and happy to take any questions. Um, hey, great work, first off. Um, so you said one out of three servers can be compromised. I wonder, are these sp strictly concrete numbers or is there a ratio or is, there, is it actually tunable in the first place? Um, so this isn't tunable because of how we use replicated secret sharing. Mm -hmm. So in replicated secret sharing, if more than one of the servers is compromised, you can reconstruct the data. So we run with exactly three servers, and if more than one of the servers is compromised, you don't get the security guarantees that Let's, we provide. Can you have more than three in that sense? Um, we haven't looked at that. Um, I think there's an interesting question there. There might be ways to adapt our construction to more than three. Um, with function secret sharing, efficient constructions only exist for the two-party setting. Um, so the way that we have things set up, it really does work best with three, um, but there might be interesting extensions with more servers. Mm, and, and one more question. Uh, you didn't exactly talk, you talked about uh, query latencies, but then again, query uh, throughputs, like your own work, Snoopy, why didn't you compare it to that? Because that could handle many qu queries, but because you're specifically doing linear scans to handle a lot of work, and that does the same thing. So. Do you have any, at least, insight of how this would compare to that? 
instead of like path around? Yeah, 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 great question. Um, so yeah, so asking about our other work, Snoopy, where we're really optimized for throughput in the ORM setting. Um, yeah, so I think we would be able to achieve a higher throughput, but at the cost of latency. So Snoopy really does a lot of batching, so we sacrifice some latency there. And it's true that we're still, so the overhead of ORM is really due to the, to the cost of these appends, um, and we still would have that overhead in the Snoopy setting. Um, and time series workloads are traditionally append intensive. So in the example that I showed, it's 90% appends and 10% queries. Um, and so in the case where you're um, just, in the case where you have a lot of appends, um, having these appends be really cheap is beneficial uh, for, for a time series database. I see, thank you. Yeah, Great thank work. you. Hi, Emma, nice talk. Uh, Ming Xun from um, CMU. So um, you mentioned that your filter value can only be in a very small domain and uh, you're using DPF to represent a point in that domain, I want, because um, DPF generally could have some large constant, and you mentioned that the domain is like somehow small, so are you using the, um, you know, the iterative uh, version of the DPF or just a one-fold version of the DPF? Yeah, 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 so we are using the most recent DPF constructions, and we aren't, we aren't limited, um, so our, our domain size isn't limited by the fact that we're using DPFs, but by the fact that we're storing a table where we have a row for each possible feature value. Mm -hmm. um, so you would really need a different data structure in order to not have this limitation. Um, so it, it's not really an artifact of the fact that we're using DPFs. Um, oh, I, see. I hope that that answers your question. Okay, <laughs> We Thank you. can also clarify this more later. It's still okay, confusing. Yeah. thank you. Okay. Bernard Ferreira, University of Lisbon. So this, your work still has some leakage, right? Do you quantify the leakage? For instance, how does this compare with searchable encryption? Yeah, yeah, so, so um, going back to what I discussed earlier, so, so we protect the query filter values, we protect the data contents, um, we still do reveal the database schema and the structure of the query. Um, so so, th those are, th so that, that's, that's sort of exactly um, what, we, what we leak. Um, one way to minimize the leakage from the query structure is by you know, reducing every query to some normal form. Um, but we aren't leaking search access patterns in terms of uh, which parts of the memory that you touch or comparisons between uh, some part of the query and the contents of the records is revealing some information. Yeah, but in your slides you have like a column F1, F2. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, it, so the query, it is, um, it is revealed uh, Thanks, thanks for clarifying that. So in the query, it is revealed uh, which of the features um, the query is, um, the, the predicates correspond to. Um, let's, it, might, it might be helpful to clarify this offline. Yeah, sure. um, yeah, yeah. Thanks for your question. All right, let's thank the speaker one last time.